Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us move on to the next problem. Identify the intermediate involved and the product formed in the following reaction. We have a acyl acide and this is heated. It gives an intermediate A and that undergoes some reaction to give B. So, these are all the react, uh, reactions given here. So, what is the intermediate? Whether it is a acyl cation or it is a again acyl cation, but the product is different in the second one. Whether it is acyl nitrine and the product is different and 4. So, we have 2 acyl cations as intermediate or 2 acyl nitrine as intermediate and the final product B is quite different in both the cases either a 4 membered one or a 5 membered one. So, we are going to find out what is the exact product that will be formed in this reaction. So, here let us start with the acyl acide. So, the acyl acide resonance structure is actually shown here. So, the negative charge will uh, come between these two nitrogen atoms and uh, one of the nitrogen gets the negative charge. So, we have this kind of resonance structure that is possible for acyl acide and uh, what happens is under photochemical conditions the loss of dinitrogen gives acyl nitrine. So, that is the major thing. So, here the bond will be shifted to this one and we end up with a loss of nitrogen. This is the driving force for this reaction that leads to the formation of an acyl nitrine. So, instead of carbon we have a nitrogen which is having the uh, extra 2 electrons. So, that is what is called this is a nitrine derivative and there is a carbonyl unit attached to that. So, this is called the acyl nitrine and uh, this acyl nitrine undergoes the courteous rearrangement. So, this reaction is a part of courteous rearrangement. So, this acyl nitrine subsequently undergoes a 1 2 shift to give isocyanate. So, this overall conversion is basically called as the courteous rearrangement. A concerted mechanism is also possible for this where the isocyanate is formed in a single step without showing uh, the acyl nitrine intermediate. So, once the acyl uh, this isocyanate is formed we have a nucleophilic nitrogen present in the compound itself. So, the nucleophilic nitrogen attacks the isocyanates carbon and we end up with the orthophenyl phenylene urea or the 1 3 dihydrobenzimidazole 2 one. So, this 5 membered ring product is actually formed. So, this is how the reaction actually proceeds and we can exactly say the intermediate involved is a acyl nitrine and the product is a uh, benzimidazole, uh, dihydrobenzimidazole to own or we can say O phenylene uh, urea. Let us move on to the next problem. So, here the correct statement about the following reaction is here an amide is given and bromine and sodium hydroxide is given as a reagent and we have to find out what is the product that is formed and there are 4 statements given. This question was asked in June 2015. So, the product is 2 fluoropyridine 3 amine and the reaction involves nitrine intermediate. So, nitrine intermediate is 1. In the other case we have a radical intermediate. In the third one we have a benzene like intermediate. The fourth one is like a addition elimination mechanism. So, we have 4 different types of mechanism by which the reaction actually proceeds and the first two give the same intermediate uh, same product, the last two give a different type of product. So, let us see what is the intermediate and what are the product that is formed. So, when an amide is treated with the sodium hydroxide and bromine it actually gives acyl nitrine. So, once the acyl nitrine is formed, so this is the intermediate in this particular case, once the acyl nitrine is formed this undergoes 1 to migration to give the isocyanate similar to the previous case which is the courteous rearrangement. And then many cases a concerted mechanism is also possible for the same reaction. 
So, without going through the nitrine intermediate, we can actually form the isocyanate also, that is also possible. So, once the isocyanate is formed, this isocyanate is attacked by the solvent water molecule. So, this results in the formation of a carbamic acid, which quickly or readily decarboxylates to give an amine. So, this is lost, uh, this CO2 is lost very quickly and uh, this is the driving force for this reaction. So, we end up with the amine derivative. So, the final product is going to be the amine and the intermediate in this reaction is a nitrine. So, this is an example of a Hoffman rearrangement. 